What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Low Fidelity Dreams. I am Armand, your host, or some of you might know me as Ex Machina. Today, we're going to be talking about the art of letting go. This is quite tough for a lot of producers or even just artists in general when they first begin. It definitely gets easier over time. And so we're just going to talk about the phases and what you can do to let go. Tonight we're recording from the beautiful city of Seattle. I took a nice hike earlier, so I feel quite energized, got a nice workout. So let's get to it. The art of letting go. This was probably the toughest thing for me when I first started producing. I think the other tough thing when I first started producing was to really finish a beat in general. So I think that first hurdle is actually what a lot of people get stuck on. You, as a new producer, will produce with your heart and soul on a DAW that you barely know how to use. And every choice you make seems that it needs to be meticulous. Like you need to have a purpose for everything that you press, everything that you do. There just needs to be a reason. But in actuality, you can just have fun and then release whatever you've created. But that part is what a lot of people never get to. Uh, Having fun usually happens when you're comfortable, you know your software, and you're not stuck on all of the options and settings and things that get you to that point where you can enjoy yourself. Everybody loses the inspiration, loses the will to produce, or even finish the track in general by the time that rolls around. And so I want to definitely talk about a few things that would help any producer that is dealing with not being able to let go in general. So getting into the first thing, create but don't hold on. Keep this as a rule. Every time that you create something, whether it be an eight bar loop, whether it be a really epic melody, whether it be something that you like, whatever it is, create it and don't hold on. Because one thing that you have to learn as you're producing is you have to have foresight. You cannot create a finished product in the first one hour of producing. If you're new, you cannot create the thing that's in your head within the first day, maybe not even the first week. And so you have to understand what foresight is. You have to be able to say, okay, I like this melody. It's good enough. And then move on to the next part. The reason why I say that you need to not hold on is because let's just say that you have created a melody and then you didn't hold on, right? And so now we can create the drum loop. Once that's created and we think it's decent, or at least it's, you know, nice enough to, to, vibe with at least, then we can move on to the next part. And as you do this process, as you stop holding on, you eventually get to a point where you have at least a somewhat finished product and then you are able to properly refine. This part is the part that you want to get to. So creating all of the basic parts of the track, the melody, the drums, the bass line, whatever it is, Give yourself like five elements to work with, like I mentioned. And then once you have gotten all five elements, listen to it a few times and then go back and make the alterations. Because what you want to do is you want your synthesizers, your elements to dance around each other, never to clash. And so if you allow yourself to not hold on, so creating a melody or an idea, and then moving on to the next part, this will enable you to actually find the other parts of the track that's lacking. And so then you can make up by make up with it by adjusting things like cutting things out or even fading, doing some effects, EQing, uh, filtering, whatever you need to do to make space for the other elements. But if you're so caught up on that first element, you'll never know what could be possible in the track. And then you lose the inspiration, and then you never create what's in your head. So again, always create, but do not hold on. Now, the next part, after you have finally let go of all of this, and you have published or even put up your track on, let's just say SoundCloud, Audius, whatever it is, It's on the internet. It doesn't have to be public, but it can be private. 
But the next step is very important, and that is to share your sound. A lot of artists get caught up on, oh, I'm not ready. This is not ready. This is not what I want it to sound like. Well, too bad, because it's going to take you another 10 years of solid feedback to get to that point. So the thing is, when you produce something, you have tunnel vision, right? You, you, can, you can see what you're creating or hear what you're creating, and then you create it. But in the end, it never really matches what was originally in your head, right? And in order to get data from that and see how you could make it closer to what was in your head, you would want to publish your music and then share it. So then you get feedback, whether it's good feedback or bad feedback, it's still data. And that's the thing that you have to strive for, really. You have to go out there looking for this data. Because if you don't have these points of data, you'll never know how to align yourself and go where you need to go. So definitely share your sound. So whether it's uploading it, you could even publish it if you want, like on SoundCloud or uh, Spotify or YouTube even. So there's many platforms out there that you can publish your music and then get feedback. But the most important thing, again, is to get the feedback. So uploading it, sending it out to maybe a select few people that you can trust that give you solid feedback. And I'll be honest, I hate when people are like, oh, yeah, this is great. Or, okay, this is good. This is nice. You know, I mean, sometimes it comes from a genuine place, but other times when I send my music to someone with the intention of getting proper feedback, uh, sometimes I don't get what I want, but sometimes I do. And when I do, I can take it with a grain of salt and then see if it's worth adjusting my track. And most of the time, 95% of the time, whatever somebody else thinks your track needs, it's usually not the case. And so just taking their feedback and taking feedback from maybe five to 10 people can really help you align how your track is headed or how it's working with the crowd, with the people. So definitely make sure that you share the tunes because people want to hear it, especially, the, your, especially your friends. I mean, if you're always talking about producing and being in that realm, you want to express it as much as you can, um, especially when you first get into music. Getting into that mindset is very important because this is what's going to allow you to continue for a long time. So the next part is, like we mentioned, gathering data, but building upon the data. So how do we build upon the data? So let's just say that you have five people that you always send your music to. You know exactly what those people's tastes are. And so you can always create something and send your music to these five people, let's just say, and you'll know exactly what their tastes are so you can kind of tell what their feedback is going to be like. Again, you're playing on people's tastes. You're building upon the feedback that you've received, and now you're creating things that are enjoyable for others but also enjoyable for you. But remember that there's a fine line between creating something that somebody else likes versus creating something that you like. I think that when you first start producing music, it is very important to get people's feedback because people listen to music all the time. You listen to music all the time, right? And so you can tell how your track is, but because you've produced this track, you're going to have some sort of favorability over it. You're going to have a bias over how it sounds. So you're not really going to understand the sonic painting that you've created because you favor all of it. Everything is just good because you created it. And so this bias will actually hinder you from getting better. And so I always make sure that I'm sending my stuff out to people so then I can get feedback if I need. Now, granted, I don't always take the feedback, but making sure that you can actually get feedback is important. So building that network of friends or even producers or artists that you can trust and then sharing your music with them consistently and then getting that feedback. Obviously, it goes both ways. I always reach out to other artists and ask for their music, and then I'll ask if they want feedback, but most of the time, I'll just listen to their music, share it, uh, but engage with that artist. Because the more that you engage with somebody else, the more they will engage with you. And so it's just a never-ending cycle. Next, at first, quantity over quality. This is what got me to where I'm at today. So when I first started producing, I spent maybe like four weeks, five weeks on a track trying to get it finished, and eventually it got finished, but it wasn't the best track that I've created. 
at the time, right? It, it was just another another track that I created, and I was like, all right, cool, on to the next one. And at first, in my opinion, is produce so much that you produce all of the bad things out of your system. Because when you produce something and it starts to sound similar to something that you've created before, you instantly stop yourself. You're like, oh, this kind of sounds familiar. This, and I feel like I've done this before. And then you can realign yourself in a better direction. When you create, let's just say, 100 tunes, you know that if those 100 tunes were not as good, well, now you know exactly 100 different ways of not to produce the song. Now, if you're so stuck on that one track, you know, if you haven't created enough quantity and you have just a few, you don't really have enough data to align yourself on what's good. What is your sound? You haven't produced enough. This is why I tell every new artist, before you even think about creating your own style, before you even think about getting to the point where you're like, oh, I wish I had my own style, you need to produce enough music. And that loose number I give always is 52. It's one track a week. It's obviously not possible for a new producer to create one a week. Uh, once you get to a point of knowing your software, knowing your workflow, you can do one a week, fully finished, mixed and mastered. But I just say 52 in general. It doesn't matter if it takes you a year, two years, three years, four years, five years. But get to the 52, and that's level one. You finish level one at 52 tracks. Level two starts at the 53rd. And so you want to get to the point where you're like level three, level four, before you feel like you have a sound. Because your tastes in music will forever evolve. It'll forever change, but your style and your process will solidify over time. Again, quality over quantity at first, and then eventually you can spend more time on a track, but you just want to get all of the bad ideas out first. The next part. This is huge. For all the binge TV watchers out there, for all of those that enjoy consuming, stop consuming only and start creating. Every time you do something, ask yourself, is this consuming or is this creating? And this will allow you to differentiate wasting time and then actually using your time worthwhile. Now, granted, it is always good to take a break, to relax, to chill, have your me time. But I will say that in this age of streaming and um, user accessibility, anyone can sit there and consume way more than they create. So always ask yourself, are you consuming or creating? Now, once you've asked yourself that, you can ask a deeper question, is what you're consuming worth your time or is it just a waste of time? Now, if it's worth your time, so you're consuming maybe a YouTube tutorial, that's fine, but it becomes a waste if you do not apply what you have learned. Every time you are consuming, ask yourself if it's worth it or not. If it is, then make sure that it is worth it. So utilize whatever you've learned or take that inspiration and then create something out of whatever you have consumed. So it's just the energy transfer from consuming to creating. This is very important. But if you're just consuming and not doing anything with that energy, with that inspiration, then you are missing out on quite a bit of your sound and possibilities of how your sound can evolve. Now, once you have done all of that, the quality, again, will come naturally. Once the quality comes, you can spend maybe 30 minutes to an hour creating a track, and that track will be nearly done. And this is because you have solidified your process. Now, in the last episode, we talked about templates. That's how I solidified my process. I have all of my instruments laid out, my drum samples laid out. I have everything kind of EQ'd to where I can just go in and then just start playing melodies, putting down drum loops, creating drum loops, sorry, and then creating the track all together. After you've gone through all of those steps, quality will come naturally. This is something that you don't have to worry about. And once quality comes, you will start to see that your style of sound is starting to formulate. Once it formulates, you can really take it anywhere. When I first started Dark Lo-Fi Glitch, that was roughly 10 years into my production experience. And I 
avidly produced eight, nine hours a day when I first started because I was fully engulfed in this world. And YouTube University finally became a thing, and I spent so much time watching videos, but I didn't always use what I've learned. And so that was one thing that actually hindered my progress because I would watch a ton of videos, but then by the time I got to the next video, I would kind of forget what the previous video was about. And so what I started to do is produce as much as I can. And then whenever I came across something that I did not know, I would specifically look up how to do that one thing. This actually enabled me to learn a lot faster because it was more specific. And so go ahead and produce music, create art, put it out there, get the feedback, build upon the feedback, and then create a ton and repeat that process until you're like level three, level four, and then you will see that your quality will automatically bleed through. I don't even have to try sometimes when I'm creating some of my tracks because it comes naturally. It's kind of weird to say it, but after 11 years of producing, I have now felt comfortable in my style, in my sound, in my production. I know exactly how it's gonna turn out in my head, but I start to challenge myself at this point. So once you get so complacent, once everything gets so easy, you can then challenge yourself to get to the next level by adding a new element in it, adding a new VST in it. Whatever it is, I can add a new element and then I can try to take that as far as I can. And then I do that 10 times over and that's what creates my album. Just go through that process. Just make sure that you can let go and receive that feedback and then realign yourself and then create another one. Keep on realigning yourself until you get to where you want or at least in that general vicinity. And then once you're experienced enough, you will be able to create anything that you want, anything in your head. You'll be able to change genres and create something so epic, so beautiful without even trying. Like I created a drum and bass track recently, which was fun. I did a collaboration with Broey and it honestly was my first time ever doing it and it turned out so awesome, so beautiful, right? And that was my first time doing it, but I have experience in production. I have experience in creating music. And so I know exactly how my process is. So there's a few things that I can adjust here or there. And then voila, I've got the product that I want. Take these steps with a grain of salt though. But the biggest thing is create and put it out there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to this episode of Low Fidelity Dreams. Please go check out my website, distantether.com. We just got a bunch of neat stuff put up on our shop. A lot of original artwork by me, R.I. Pixels, my visual alias. Go check it out. Also, my YouTube channel. I've got a bunch of new videos up and a lot of live jams coming out. Check it out. Drop a sub, drop a comment, and we will see you on the next one.